purpose does the gentleman from Rhode Island seek recognition? I move to strike the last word. The uh, gentleman is recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for bringing this important bill to a markup. According to the Department of Justice, nearly one in three Americans have some type of criminal record. The consequences of a criminal record, even without a conviction, can last a lifetime, creating barriers to accessing safe housing, employment, professional licenses, and even something as basic as a government identification. When formerly incarcerated people have their basic needs met, like a safe place to live and stable employment, it can significantly reduce the likelihood they will commit a new offense, and as a result, make our communities safer. Yet, especially as technology makes it easier to do, a majority of employers and landlords run background checks on potential employees and tenants. This makes it harder for individuals with criminal records, even minor ones, to find the stability they need to move on with their lives. And this, let me just quickly reject this notion by our Republican colleagues that somehow smart, good public policy that will make communities safer means you're soft on crime. I'm not gonna be lectured by anybody on that side of the aisle. I was mayor of a city for eight years. And in that role, I served as the public safety commission for the city of Providence as I didn't fill that position and brought about the lowest crime rate in 40 years by making sure we support good policing and we hold police officers accountable. So I'm not gonna be lectured by Republicans about being soft on crime. The reality is if you're serious about reducing crime, making certain that people can re-enter the community safely and have a path to success reduces the likelihood that people will re-offend and commit more crimes. This is not a complicated idea. And in fact, research shows that record sealing and expungement can counteract these trends of reoffending. In fact, a study in Michigan found that individuals who received expungement earned 22% higher wages and had just a 2.6% of expungement recipients were rearrested for a violent offense within five years of receiving their expungement. The Clean Slate Act will automatically seal the records of individuals convicted of nonviolent federal offenses and create a process for individuals with other qualifying nonviolent criminal records to petition the courts to have their federal records sealed. This will remove barriers to employment, housing, education, and other services that individuals need to successfully rebuild their lives. This is not only essential to ensuring those with nonviolent records can re-enter society and provide for themselves and their families, but also it will boost our workforce, a particularly important benefit today as America faces massive labor shortages. And so for those of us that are really interested in policies that will reduce crime, making it possible for those who have committed an offense to re-enter the community successfully. When I was mayor, we created a re-entry council because one of the impediments was even minor convictions or contact with the law made it incredibly difficult for people to find work, find a landlord willing to take them as a tenant, get the papers necessary to have a proper identification, and the list goes on and on. You know, people talk a lot about the ability of people to redeem themselves and pay for their wrongdoing and acknowledge their wrongdoing and then move on with their lives. That's the whole principle of rehabilitation. And these expungements are essential. I can tell you that as a member of Congress, I continue to get contact with my, by my constituents who've had some minor contact, but because it could not be expunged, they are finding it impossible to get a job, to find a place to live, to take care of their families. This creates enormous stress and it increases the likelihood that person will re-offend. So if we're serious about public safety and we don't want to just use it on a television ad, here's something you can do about it. Pass this bill, and with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. The gentleman yields back. What, what purpose does the gentleman from Tennessee seek recognition? Strike the last word. The gentleman is recognized. I want to let Mr. Bishop know that he's going to love the new Fresh Start Act when it gets here because it takes into consideration financial crimes and over a certain amount of money you cannot participate. Glad you'll be against this one, Mr. Cohen. <laughs> and then I do my other job, and that's to yield to Ms. Jackson Lee. I thank you so very much. Uh, the uh, Crime Subcommittee is uh, pleased to be part of helping to rebuild uh, Americans' lives and hope that our colleagues will be on the floor of the House agreeing uh, with uh, a huge number of advocates and support across America. Let me now emphasize some points that are important. One, um, this whole uh, down a rabbit's hole misdirection of crime, as I said, crime is uptick everywhere and it has surged after the pandemic for a variety of reasons. Certainly in my state where you don't even have to 
um, put a dot on a piece of paper to get a gun. It's a field day for criminals. Open carry, permitless carry. That's Texas' contribution to the surge in crime. And our law enforcement officers, my friends, in Houston and beyond, are struggling every day. A father went out for whatever reasons with his two-year-old in the car seat. He's dead and the two-year-old is dead. I'm mad as heck. Mad as heck. He was killed with a gun. Killed with a gun. So what we're trying to do is to take a detour for these individuals with uh, low offenses as it relates to drugs. And law enforcement will not be blocked from opening and accessing uh, these records under this legislation, H.R. 2864, because it ensures officers and prosecutors would have access to the records. The sealed records would not, however, be disclosed as part of a routine backup check, as I said before, of employment, housing, or other services, unless the employment is potentially with law enforcement or firearms or controlled substances. Under other circumstances, including applications for countless other services, that people need to rebuild their lives. They need to restore their lives. They need to be different from the same pattern that they were in before. They need to be accessed job training. They need to be accessed how to handle your finances, how to be a good parent. All of that are services that could be denied. And they can go forward knowing that their past will no longer stop them from getting jobs. Two of the major corporations in America, Walmart, J.P. Morgan Chase, a bank, have supported this legislation. And it is clear that they understand at a time industries are facing labor shortages everywhere, it is more necessary to have full employment with people who can restore their lives and be contributing Americans. One in three Americans have a criminal record. That's shocking. I wish that wasn't the case. All around, mostly drugs. And the lifelong barriers create a lifelong of poverty, moving from place to place, getting one job after another being terminated when the employer finally looks up and says, oh, you have a criminal record, or showing up with your neat, shiny shoes and a brand new suit that you may have gotten from Goodwill and doing your best in the interview, and then they find out that you had some criminal activity five years ago, 10 years ago, that was a low uh, offense. And our states have shown us that they have this kind of program. But as I said, the states are too complicated. You've got to jump over hurdles, climb trees, and fly to the moon. Families are suffering, starving, being hungry, because we have this kind of circumstance. So I'm pretty tough on us not doing this in the right way. The Terry fix that we just passed to uh, not discriminate against people who have an infinitesimal amount of uh, crack or drugs versus those who had a big amount and didn't get retroactivity under the first step. That's going to help a lot of people. The number is about 200, but it may help some others. So I'm grateful to Lisa Blunt Rochester and to uh, Rutz Holler, who was on this uh, uh, committee with us before. And I want to indicate that a Walmart has specifically said this would help to ensure that all people, regardless of background, can pursue a career with meaningful work. We urge the committee to act. I ask the unanimous consent to put that into the record, Mr. Chairman. objection. And then I would also add, again, how about this? Americans for Tax Reform, Brennan Center for Justice, Business Roundtable, Center for American Pro uh, Progress, Code for America, Community Legal Services, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, Walmart, uh, R Street Institute, The Third Way, Americans for Prosperity, Right on Crime, a combination of diverse groups supporting this legislation. I ask my colleagues to support it. And I hope we can call for the question. I yield back. General Lady yields back. I seek recognition. Oh, I, I yield to Mr. Gates. The, the time is ex gentleman's time has expired. What purpose does Mr. Gates? <coughs> <coughs> what purpose does the gentleman from Florida seek recognition? I move to strike the last word. Gentleman is recognized. Thank you. All of the groups and businesses in corporate America that the gentle lady from Texas just mentioned can hire whoever they want now. Like, if they want to go hire people with criminal records, there's nothing in the law that stops them. And if they want to be willfully ignorant or informed as to the background of the people that are applying, there, there is no prohibition. And so uh, the, the enthusiasm 
is uh, a bit confusing because they are in control of their own destiny. Similarly, I, I heard the gentleman from Texas be hypercritical of open carry and constitutional carry, and I am an enthusiastic supporter of both of those measures. And I had the great privilege to be in the wonderful Houston area recently and saw folks vindicating their Second Amendment rights by openly carrying, and I just thought it kept everybody real cordial and felt real safe there and uh, enjoyed it a great deal. I yield uh, to Mr. Bishop. Uh, I thank the gentleman. I I appreciate Mr. Cohen's uh, acknowledgement that, uh, not, that not dealing or addressing uh, financial and fraud crimes in this uh, statute is, is a problem. And I thought I'd just elaborate something I said before, maybe just trace over, elaborate just a bit more. So there are exceptions here. If, uh, if there's, you, the law enforcement can access these records otherwise sealed to the public, for investigatory or prosecutorial purposes, for a background check that relates to employment with a law enforcement agency, any position that a federal agency designates as a national security position or high-risk public trust position, so maybe all the 87,000 IRS agents, I don't know, uh, manufacture, importation, sale, transfer, possession, or carrying of firearms, explosives, or ammunition, employment for uh, somebody in, the, uh, in, in an area, in a business that um, uh, uh, is defined under the Controlled Substances Act as somebody handling the importation, uh, sale, or transfer of controlled substances. So all those things, and then I guess that's a, that's private enterprise, right? That last one. All this other stuff you're protecting government, but what about somebody who's got to hire for a bank, bank tellers? What about every business out there that needs to hire a bookkeeper and needs to know whether the person's been convicted of uh, financial uh, crimes or embezzlement? A bookkeeper or a controller? Um, what about somebody who's been convicted of laundering money for a, a criminal cartel? That's, that's, uh, that's not within the excluded crimes here. Somebody who's been convicted solely of laundering money for terrorists, but is otherwise well, Mr. not Bishop, part of their... Mr. Bishop, I mean, aren't those wrong place, wrong time kind of crimes? I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, you, you, well, you've heard our colleagues on the, uh, in the majority talk about Folks who just, you know, they end up in the wrong position, maybe made a wrong choice. I you mean, don't want somebody's wh life wh to be Why defined. do you lack such empathy for those who are engaged in financing terrorist organizations and money laundering for cartels? How about this one, Mr. Gates? I appreciate that. The, uh, the, they, they have one exception here, or uh, one of the excluded defenses is domestic violence, uh, interstate domestic violence. But there's no exception for somebody who's been convicted under Title 18, Section 117 for domestic violence by a habitual uh, uh, offender on federal property. Why not? Why, is there some reason that the uh, committer of, a, of domestic violence on federal property is, is, uh, sh should have their uh, life defined by the offense, but the person who uh, travels interstate to commit domestic violence should right, not? You're underscoring Mr. Rice's point earlier that when we get into parsing out these individual offenses, we invariably are going to cut the cloth wrong incorrectly in one area or another. And you know, rather than like tr trying to use the strong arm of the federal government to to really put a blindfold on private enterprise as they seek to engage a workforce, like why not just become maybe a little more graceful society? Like may, maybe here it's not a law that is needed, but the understanding that in our places of work, if someone did in fact have a drug offense, a nonviolent offense, an offense that wouldn't directly affect employment, we ought to just we ought to be more caring. I don't think you can legislate around the hearts of people in middle management making hiring decisions. Um, and and maybe it's a cultural issue, perhaps more than a legal one. I, I yield back to the gentleman from North Carolina. I, and so, but the, but if you're balancing these things out and you're undertaking to do that, it does seem to me that the the, the the question ought to be at the end of the day: shouldn't is your care be reserved for? you know, folks out there in ordinary private life in America who are trying to get by and are going to be subject to being re-victimized by crime because they're deprived of information they'd like to have access to. But we're always solicitous of government, of the federal agency, of the 87,000 IRS agents, make sure the IRS is effective when they come down on Americans. Go back. Gentleman yields back. Does anyone else seek recognition? In that case, the amendment